What is good, everybody? My name is Dylan Weissman, and today I have a video that's meant to help plug some leaks that you probably have in your 6 Max Parliament Omaha game. Before we hop into those leaks, I want to give you a quick reminder to be on the lookout over the upcoming weeks for more content from both myself and Chris Weiner as we lead up to the launch of the Advanced PLO Mastery course in early March. So this first set of information pertains to situations where there is an RFI, or a raise first in. This means that you're either the first player to raise, or there's been one raise in front of you. What I see as probably the main mistakes in RFI situations is that players are entering the pot with a passive action too often at lower stakes. The reason why this is super punishable at lower stakes is because there's a really high rake. And with a passive action, for example a limp, or a cold call, you don't get to win the pot preflop, which means that you get beaten in the face by rake. I know what you're saying. Our motto at Upswing Poker is that more rake is better, and I really hope they don't fire me, but in reality, you, you aren't allowed to play this way. You're just going to leak so much money, and so that it's also a really good way to help to calibrate you to start entering pots with aggressive actions. You win money playing poker generally by getting people to fold, and you can't get people to fold if you're just entering a pot passively. So start to retrain yourself, especially at low stakes, to have solid opening ranges, which you can get from our upcoming course or from the PLO matrix, and to use those solid, uh, use those solid ranges to enter the pot aggressively. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is that you're playing too many low, unconnected hands from pretty much all positions. I see a lot of players limping or open raising hands like Ace, Jack, Six, Deuce from the hijack, for example. That hand just doesn't play well. And if you have H, Jack, Six, Deuce with a nut suit, that can be open on the button, but it, it doesn't have enough playability, especially with multiple players behind you, to justify entering the pot. Munker Solver, generally speaking, hates cards below a 5 in your opening hand. This is a really good heuristic to take into your day-to-day -day games, because it's going to help you start to cultivate opening ranges that will play well over multiple streets, as well as multi-ways or in whatever situations you're most likely to find yourself in. Um, the last thing that I see a lot of people messing up on is that they're raising all of their king-king combinations, or they're entering them passively. I've talked to players that say, well, if I have king-king and I'm under the gun, even if it's not good kings, it's really good for me to set mine. That's just not true, and it's a strategy that will lose you lots of money over time. Generally speaking, we only want to be raising, well, we want to raise 100% of our double suited kings from under the gun. We want to be raising about 78% of our single suited kings from under the gun, and I have the worst combinations here. This is actually a pro tip. When you're trying to think about how to construct your opening ranges in Pot Limit Omaha, because there are so many hand combinations, it makes sense to think about what the worst combination of a distinct hand class is and use that as your guiding light. So, right here, the top 78% or excuse me the bottom of a 78% king king opening range is king king 5 deuce single suit and king king 5 4 with the 5 high suit um, and so you can use that as your kind of reflection mechanism to know what kings are better than that and then help to construct your opening ranges without having to memorize literally every king king combination Moving away from RFI situations, there are just so many mistakes people are making that it was hard for me to find a couple, but I picked out the ones that I see happening the most often, specifically in live poker, which I which I think is really important to hone in on because a lot of y'all play live PLO pretty consistently. So the first thing I really want to talk about is that you are probably entering multi-way pots passively with too wide of a range. This means that you're calling behind an opening razor and a cold call in front of you. This means you're defending the big blind way too wide when there's been four people entering the pot, like an open three callers, and then you're calling the big. And this is something that I think has been happening for years and years and years, literally since I've been playing Pot Limit Omaha starting a decade ago. There's this logical fallacy that pot odds allows you to enter a pot when you're getting six to one, seven to one, eight to one. This especially is not true in PLO because you're more likely to make hands and you're way more likely to be dominated when you make those hands if there are more players in the pot and if those players are playing somewhat reasonable ranges. I'll give you an example. Let's say that there is a raise from under the gun, a call on the cutoff, a call on the button, and you call on the big blind with a hand like jack, eight, six, five with a jack high suit. The flop comes king of hearts, seven of hearts, two of spades. 
So now you have a jack high flush draw and some backdoor straight draws. When, when you check, which is what you should be doing, and the under the gun player C bets, which they're not going to be doing very often, they're going to have an incredibly strong range. They're going to have ace-ace-king combinations with ace-high flush draw. They're going to have their king-king combinations that also have some hearts in them. And your hand is just going to play terribly against a range like that. Even when you make your flush, you're so likely to be dominated that the amount of money you put in preflop not only was burned in terms of not being able to continue on enough flops, but you have now really substantial reverse implied odds. And this will get you into a ton of trouble. I know that a lot of people that play live PLO that are maybe starting to mix it up in the streets feel the pain of what I'm talking about. So a really good way to plug this leak is to just stop entering pots passively, multi-ways, with hands that can't make the nuts often. So hands that aren't high pocket pairs, hands that don't have nut flush draws like ASX with, with a suited combination. You're just going to make yourself more trouble-proof. You're going to put yourself into less difficult situations, which will allow you to make more money and get more soaked on PLO, which is what I and pretty much everyone else wants you to do. Um, the other mistake that I really see people making is that they never 4-bet bluff. It's really similar to the old days of Hold'em, where if somebody 3-bet you or 4-bet you, you knew that they had aces. We live in that world in PLO still, and it just isn't very effective. If you are trying to build a modern game, you need to be able to be bluffing to restrain the aggression of other players. So when you have a player that's 3-betting a lot, the worst thing that they can that can happen to them is for you to 4-bet. Not just because they have a wide range, but because you now restrain their aggression. And if their aggression is restrained, they're less able to win more money preflop. And they just have to play, they have to play a more solid strategy that that doesn't have as that it doesn't have as much game value. Because we generate game value or we generate equity generally by by being able to play aggressively. And so by not building a four betting range, you allow people to just run you over, generate all this game value, and print money off of you without you being able to fight back. So now that we all can agree that it's important to have a four bet bluffing range. What I want to be able to do is construct this range in a way that you don't get punished super often. This means that you're not getting it in bad against aces. This means that you have a high probability of generate folds for yourself and that it's just kind of easy to think about. My intention for people watching this video is to get a basic understanding of building a four betting range. To get the nitty gritty, either dive into the PLO matrix or sign up for our course because we have multiple videos on 4-betting. So when we're starting to think about 4-bet bluffing, I'm going to give you some do's and some don'ts. So some really good hands to 4-bet bluff with are combinations such as ace-queen, jack-8, double suited. The reason being that we have an ace in our hand, which means it's less likely for our opponent to have aces. We don't have a king in our hand, which means that it's more likely for our opponent to have kings, therefore that they can fold to our 4-bet and we have tons of playability on flops if our opponent ends up calling us. We want to be able to get it in on a majority of flops in a 4-bet pot because we're going to be at such a low stack to pot ratio, specifically if we start 100 big blinds deep. So a hand like Ace-Queen, Jack-8, Double Suited plays super well as a 4-bet because we are able to generate folds and we're able to just pot lots of flops that we only get called with. Some bad hands to 4-bet with are your ace-king xx combinations, specifically because we anti-block our opponent having kings. We want our opponent to have pocket kings when we are 4-betting because they will fold them. And when we're 4-betting as a bluff, we need to be able to construct a range that makes it more likely for our opponent to not have pocket aces. And king-king is one of the main hand classes that'll go into a 3-betting range that can actually fold to a 4-bet. So when you're in the streets, start to push yourself. Don't just 4-bet with aces. Really start to think about ways you can generate aggression that will make it such that you're difficult to play with and will start to push your game to a more modern structure that I think is really important in 2020. That's all that I have for everybody today. 
as I said before, continue to be on the lookout for more content coming out from Chris, Wayner, and myself in the upcoming weeks. Next week, Chris is going to have a video that highlights one of the main spots that people are playing incorrectly and just burning tons of money. Be sure to follow Upswing Poker and watch that video because it's honestly sick. I love it a lot myself. I hope that you all enjoyed this video and I look forward to making more content for you. Have a great day.